Hey y'all, it's Julie, the Gulf Coast Stitcher. Today's Tuesday, June 12th, and I've got lots to share with y'all today. Um, first and foremost, exciting news. Sarah um, is at the Girl State uh, Governmental Camp, which it, Governmental Camp sounds horrible. It sounds like it's something that's sanctioned by the government. That's not what I meant. A government in action um, camp that she's at. Um, at Florida State University, as you know, I dropped her off last week. I will pick her up. I will travel to pick her up tomorrow and actually pick her up Thursday morning. But um, when the kids first get there, they divide all the kids, which there's around 400, I think, into um, two parties. And then those two parties um, begin the organization process of organizing incorporated um, cities, counties. They elect commissioners and mayors and all of the things that really gives the kids an idea of what it takes to um, put together an organized community and how communities are part of bigger communities and so forth. So um, she, fast forward to a couple days ago, she was nominated as the, um, for the primary election for governor for her party. And her best friend, Veronica, who is with her, was there. They got split up when they get there because that's what they do so you can meet other um, people. But she was nominated as the lieutenant governor for the primary, the nominee for the race. So then we kind of waited on, waited for Sunday. The kids had um, a non-denominational church service at on campus, and then they cast their ballots. And um, I'm proud to announce that our girl did it. Um, Sarah is the governor of the Seminole State, which is the fictitious state that they organized. Um, and Veronica is her lieutenant governor, so it could not have worked out better for them. So proud, so ready to have her home, although I know she's having the time of her life, and I have a strong suspicion when she gets home, she's going to say, Mom, I really want to go to Florida State, because she's having a great time. Um, I haven't shared anything on social media, because they have a really interesting policy, which I think is fantastic. Um at Girl State, and that is that the kids can be on their phones, but they cannot use any geocached social media sites. So no Facebook, no Instagram, no Snapchat. They can text their parents. They can call anyone they want to. Um, they just ask that they don't share photos or tag any friends that they've met there until they're safely in the possession of their um, parents or guardians who drop them off. And I think that's outstanding because in today's world, as an extra measure of security, they just don't want people knowing that there's 350 girls aged 17 and 18 um, on the campus in the summer and knowing specifically where they're at. So I think that was awesome. So we'll have lots of pictures and lots more to share once she returns home. Um, I know she's probably pretty excited to share some of that info. So that's going on with her. Um, I had a good, great visit in Jacksonville. My, my, um, I call her my sister. She's my lifelong friend. She's Sarah's aunt. Um, you know, friends are the family that you pick, and I've been friends with her for 32 or 33 years. Um, she is my soul sister, uh, Lynn, and we went and stayed with her and her family. Um, I shared lots of pictures on Instagram if you follow me there. She lives in Oakleaf Plantation in Jacksonville, which is a crazy huge community that... I mean, I thought up here on the Panhandle we had some organized communities, uh, neighborhoods, planned out developments. No. They have inside their community, they have Publix, they have Target, they have Chick-fil-A, they have inside the community. So let that sink in. Everyone drives golf carts everywhere because who needs to drive a car when you're just taking the kids to the, the pool? Um, so it was pretty fun. It was a, a quick trip because that broke up my drive to deliver um, Sarah and Veronica to Florida State and then gave some time to spend with family that I really needed and some time to step away from the stitchy madness. So that's what I did. And I didn't pick up a single thing to stitch. I took it with me because you always bring cross stitch. But we, I've got these little hairs that are itching me. Um, I always bring cross stitch, but I was just too tired by the time we got done with all that we were cramming in. Lynn has five kids. I had two with me. By the time we fit everything in, it, you know, if you're around families that big, you seem to go from morning drop-offs, pick up, one meal into the next. Um, yeah, it was wonderful, though. So we had a great time. So I'll be tra traveling back to get her. And another thing happened. Um, 
I stopped at exit 283 on I-10. Anyone who's traveling through Florida, y'all need to stop at exit 283 and stop at the Busy Bee. The Busy Bee is like a truck stop. This is so funny. They have the nicest bathrooms that I've ever seen. Stop what you're doing and Google the Busy Bee. You will see the bathrooms. They are so nice, in fact, that they are referred to on billboard signs on I-10 as the Taj Mastals. So we had to make our stop at the Taj Mastals, and they did not disappoint, y'all. It was beautiful. They have um, a Dunkin' Donuts, a Burger King, a full-on convenience store. Um, Dan was in just absolute heaven because I was like, what do I bring him home from this trip? I'm just going to visit my friend. I always feel like I want to bring something home. They have a full, like, 12-foot case of beef jerky by the pound, all different flavors, and not only beef jerky, gator jerky, deer jerky, um, yeah. So he was super excited about that. And um, they have some delicious little um, nuggets called Bee Bites that are like puff corn that are dipped in caramel. That's so amazing. It's like, it's kind of like caramel, like caramel popcorn meets like cereal. I don't know, but it's, it's a good thing. Um, and a huge like fudge bar, a, like a place where you get fudge by the pound. Um, all kinds of delicate, I mean, just delicious local um, honey and salsa and barbecue sauce. And it was, it, let me tell you, I do a lot of, I used to do a lot more traveling than I do now. And I spent a lot of time on the interstates in this country and I had not stopped at um, a Busy Bee before. But that is the Busy Bee flagship store. So it's going to be nicer than all the rest. But if you ever need a pit stop on I-10 traveling uh, either eastbound or westbound, stop at exit 283. Just remember that. 283. It's amazing. So that was on our trip. In fact, Danny was like, when you got to go pick the kids back, how far up is it to go to 283 from where you have to be? You know, and I know he's wanting more beef jerky, but it's way too far out of my way for that. Not that I wouldn't do it for him, but it would add a lot of time. And Sarah and I both have, when I pick her up Thursday, she has work and I have school Thursday night. So we won't have a bunch of spare time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I had a few questions. I've recorded this part of this video already. I don't know if I talked about my rotation. I don't think I did. Um, I don't have a rotation. I don't really believe in a lot of stitchy rules. I think you should stitch what moves you. I think when I, despite my best efforts of planning to stitch something and doing stitch alongs, I start them all strong out of the gate and then life happens. For example, Eliza Bell Cox, I um, organized that sal. I love that sampler. I love seeing everybody's progress on it. And I have put in two, two threads. It's not the size. It's not the stitch count. It's none of that. It's the color changes and the not being able, you know, stitching. I don't park threads. So stitching a few threads and then ending it and moving on to the next color and then ending it with a linen that small I don't feel comfortable like confetti jumping around um and I love it I will do it it will happen but right now with my mind being between Tallahassee and my dad's in Gulf Breeze at a rehab facility trying to heal and so I'm there all the time and then going to school in Niceville that's an hour that way I mean when I sit down to stitch I just want I don't know. I'm in that mo mode where I'm kind of leaning more towards um, charts with less colors, beautiful colors, but less changes. Um, and I, I bounce around. So I say, if you ask me what my rotation is, I say to kit up what you love, keep it in your um, stitchy spot, in your bag or right next to where you stitch regularly and pick up what moves you to do it. That's what I do. Um, it should not be something that feels like a chore. It should not be f something that feels like you have to post progress. Um, that being said, I absolutely am living vicariously through um, people posting. I mean, the Crafty Curator, her, <laughs> Letitia, her, her progress is fantastic on Eliza. Um, it's interesting to see where everybody's starting at different spots. And, and I have no regrets. I will catch up. Um, I probably won't catch up. That was a bad statement. I will continue on once um, things settle down in my house just a little bit, whenever that happens. If that's next weekend or if that's a month from now, whenever it happens, I'll pick up something a little more involved. 
Um, we're preparing to have my stepdaughter for a couple weeks. Um, we'll, we'll have her this weekend, but then we get her, I don't know the exact dates, 4th of July area time. Um, so I'm also, you know, planning all the stuff we're going to do for that because I just need a list of like a, like a bullet list of things to do. Um, I don't, I don't plan to the point where I'm like, on this day, we're going to do this. On this day, we're going to do that. But I do make a list of things that I want to do um, while she's here. We always have her, you know, we're on a regular rotation with her. But we don't always have her for big blocks of time like this when she doesn't have to go to school. So we have a little bit more free time. So some things that I'm planning with her. Um, we have a Naval Museum um, here, which is amazing. And her dad's never been to that. So, um I know he'll have fun there and then some stuff I'll just do with the girls. We're going to go pick strawberries and come home and um, I go through the can. I can. Um, I put up, we call it putting up food here in the south. I put up jams and jellies and apple butters and salsas and chow chows and um, some of you Midwest friends probably don't even know what any of that is. Maybe. I don't know. I don't really know how different our um, canning cultures are. But um, I'll be putting up food this this over the next few weeks. So I'll chronicle, I will chronicle that on Instagram. I don't, inter I don't do vi photos in my videos. I try just to not edit these. Um, so there'll be some canning going on. There will be some... Uh, I'll take her to, I'll take them to some trips just locally. Like I like to just, it's a staycation kind of, but we're going to live like tourists a little bit. So there'll be lots of cool stuff on Instagram about that. So yeah, that's what's life update. That was 11 minutes of stuff going on. So that was just the cliff notes version. So y'all can imagine how crazy, crazy, crazy things are for me. Um, if I'm repeating myself, I'm so sorry. Y'all know how it is to do this multiple times. I have my phone on airplane mode and on do not disturb and it has continued to ring so um, that's why I'm doing this again because I just couldn't refocus after I kept getting knocked off air. Um, people have asked about this, what this is that I sit in front of. I'm sitting at a high top in our kitchen. It's a really old that we never use um, ironing board build in. But our house is a historical home, and so really changing or doing anything to it is literally an like or ordinance nightmare, and um, we just don't do that. So, what else is around me? Well, this here, this is um, a load-bearing wall, a beam. It also goes across the top. I don't know if you can see that. Um, into the kitchen. The kitchen was built on after this house was built. I think I've told you before in the early, early 1900s. I think it was 1905 was the original floor plan. Um, so the kitchen, if you know anything about um, southern architecture, let me get this back down a little bit, um, and culture, the kitchen would have been outside and the food would have been brought in through the back door that I look out all the time onto the water. Um, if this, we would all call this house too a fish camp style house. Um, it, and by that it was, it's not, you know, full of fanciness. Uh, in this, when it was built, there were like fancy, fancy houses, lean tos and fish camps in this area. So we are, um, yeah. This is our home, and it's really cool. And if I didn't have so much stuff in it, I would take you on a tour one day because it's chock-a-block full of really neat historical things. Um, there's my pumpkin spice farms over this shoulder. Over this shoulder, Deb and Kef, I, I wish if I didn't have to move my computer and make everybody seasick, I'd show you closer. But that is um, Sarah's first birthday gift, and that is a... Um, share of stock in Disney. So those of you with grandbabies, children, um, you can, as a custodial um, owner, purchase one share of these different um, stocks available for really cool places. Um, I got it at a at a website called onestock.com. I didn't get it. Um, her Aunt Lynn did. And um, they custom framed it and put a little plaque with a message. And um, yeah, 
that sh that share, that one share in 17 years has turned into a lot more shares because there's been a few splits. Um, so yeah, if you love Disney, that's a great gift to give somebody. And when you go through one share, it's a really, really minimal fee because you're only allowed to purchase one share. So you bypass a ton of fees and brokers and all that stuff. So anyway, that's what's behind me. What's in my stitchy bag? Well, as I just said, um, I have Eliza. I've worked on her a little bit, but I feel like it's a big undertaking and I've only had minutes here and there to work on stuff, just a few minutes. So this is my bag that I have. I showed this last week. Um, it's an Evertote bag from Caroline. I like the little Canadian flag on the tag. So cute. Um, I buy, I, I acquire project bags like crazy because I believe in supporting each other and, um, let's be honest, there's always something to put in one, right? So what am I currently working on? I've talked about this before. This is, um, some trust in chariots and y'all, I carry a lot of heartstring samplery in the shop. I, I'm seeing a tag that's going around and I didn't do my homework and, and print the tag or research it much. I heard Michelle talking about it on her stitch with me. Who are your top three favorite cross stitch designers? I think is one of the questions. And if it's not a question, I just made it up. Beth Twist Heartstring Samplery, hands down, is one of my, one of my literally favorite. Um, if you guys hear weird sounds, it's thundering. And we have um, a four-legged house guest who's um, one of Danny's clients. We watch her every once in a while, so she huffs and moves around a little bit when it's um, when it's thundering. But back to Beth. Heartstring Samplery, Beth Twist. I buy and buy and buy. I acquire a lot of charts. As you can imagine, this, this problem um, escalated <laughs> exponentially when I opened my shop. But... What I actually look forward to and put my hands on the most, um, this is in my top three. My top three is not really in any particular order, but if you follow what I'm stitching, Beth Twist seems to keep popping up. Um, I love her charts. I love that she has lots of, she tells you a story. Um, she talks about the, the charts a lot. Uh, and this is an older one, but... It makes me think a lot of my dad. My dad is doing well. Thank you guys so much for, for your thoughts with that. My dad is an avid, um, I don't know what you would call it. He's not really like a prolific gambler. Um, that's not his personality, but he loves the horse races. He loves the dog races. He loves to study the athleticism of the, of the animals. Um, he gets the books and he studies their speeds and how, you know, there's a, I could go on a whole nother video about, about that. Um, he is for, you know, adopting out and, um, all that good stuff. I mean, he's not for animal cruelty by any means, but he loves the specimen of a sports animal. It's just that they're like perfect Genetically, I mean, I guess the same thing could be said about people who are into showing cats, you know, or showing dogs. They they live one wonderful lives, and they are wonderful specimens of their breed. And then hopefully they go on into have a lovely retirement. He was losing his mind over the Triple Crown win. Um, this past weekend when we went to visit him. So that was awesome. So anyway, that's just one of the many reasons that, um, besides the spiritual reference of this, um, it says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. And I love that. Um, cause we get in debates, like we get in heated conversations about who it is. This was on GMA is a racehorse an athlete. Or is the jockey the athlete, or are they both athletes? I'll just leave you with that thought. That came up. So, this is what's in my bag. I promised some, someone bought some Duchess hoops online, and I don't know who it was, and I'm sorry I didn't write down um, your question, but I promised that I would show them. So, um, I show these all the time. This is, this is Old Faithful. I need to name her. 
what's a good name for her? Y'all um, put a good name for my this five inch duchess hoop in the comment because I have a collection of we'll say 12, 15, something like that, duchess hoops. Um, but this is the one that I use every single night that I stitch, regardless of the size of the project. Um, so the the commenter said, you know, I need some help. I can't seem to get my fabric onto this hoop. So I'll just do a quick demonstration. So this is my hoop, and it should be like very, like it hardly stays together when there's no fabric in it. At, at the stage of like, if I let this go, see, it's, it's very, very loose. So there's a good chance that you bought that on eBay or Amazon and one piece or the other does not go with the, doesn't go together. I've had that happen. I've bought an interior um, hoop that was paired with an exterior hoop and it was a different interior hoop. It wasn't a duchess. So if you can get one that has a label, that's awesome. If not, duchess hoops have wide felt in my experience. There are a few other, um, there goes Destiny walking around. That's who you hear her jingling. Um, there are other hoops that have felts that are narrower. I think there's, um, hold tight, does that sound right? I don't know. Anyway, in my experience, the wide is legit. It does better. So here's how far I've gotten on some Trust in Chariots. I'm stitching this on 32 count X Jude. Um, uh, 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 what is it called? Rustic Brown, I think. It's, y'all. Mm, it smells so good. I would text or I'd Facebook message Jennifer, the um, whistle stop stitcher, and I was like, I can't. I'm stitching on this just because I want to smell it. And that's weird, but true. Oh, well, there's my needle minder. Move that out of the way. So I'm stitching this. The most exciting news is I'm stitching this entirely in silks. It's my first time ever using silks. Um, and I bought a lot of silks off of eBay. And they there was enough. There were just the ones I needed. So some of the colors are going to be off just a little bit, but not by much. Because I used my DMC color card with the floss on it. And they got pretty close. So, y'all, I need one of the... I keep saying I need to buy one of those quilting corner things because I measured this with my me tape measure. I'm sure I did. I put a counting pin in it, and that's probably where I went wrong. My pin must have shifted, or I didn't put the back on it or something because this is supposed to be... This is supposed to be centered three inches down and three inches over. Or two and a half, I think, is what, what I went for. Clearly, <laughs> I'm shifted way over to this side. But that's okay. Because I'm probably going to frame it myself. Um, and I think I can do that. Teresa, do you think that it's one... I've got one and three quarter inches on the top. If I pin this and lace this myself, do you think I can make it work? Leave me a message and let me know. So that's what's going on there. I love, love, love this. Um, and it's a variety of silks that I'm using. I bought some, um, I bought, I bought somebody's stash and it was a very good, good price. Um, and it, and it had different silks in it. So it had some of the, um, I don't even know how you say that. This one. Is that it? Of Averisois. And there were some MPIs. And there is one, I'm using one Victorian motto. I'm using um, Dark Horse. Ironically, that's the color I'm going to do the horse. The horse and the dark writing. Everything else is silks. And I'm telling you, silks on the Exude, so this is an MPI. Silks on that Exude fabric, and I've been using 40 count. This x -Jude is like, this. I'm using 32 and it's like butter. I love it. So that's what's going on there. Let's talk about fabrics a little bit. Everybody's asking me about um, getting different fabrics. I love y'all. I want to. 
the bad news is, and I don't mean to sound negative in any way, shape, or form, because I'm obsessed with Lakeside Linen, and that's who I'll talk about. Um, they're just way, way, way behind. Um, they're doing the very best they can, and I have to say that that is like a sign of a thriving and awesome cross-stitch market and cross-stitch community, but they're a little bit buried. So they are like on a crazy long wait to get fabrics from them who, who I love. Um, r and &R, I have so much of that. I don't, excuse me, I don't need any r, &R like in this lifetime. Um, I say that and then they're going to come out with a new color and I'm going to have to buy that. But right now I have a ton of R&R. &R, I have a ton of um, Exude and I'm hopeful to get more Lakeside Linen. But right now I'm on a holding pattern with my fabric. I'm going to do a de-stash. We've talked about this. What? This hair is bugging the jeezy out of me today. Um, I'm going to do a de-stash. I have to. <laughs> I got to get rid of some stuff. I just don't need it. When you start in the stitchy world... You have one style and one, I mean, things really evolve it is what I see. Um, the things that I love to stitch when I first got back into this are not still the things I love to stitch now. And I'm holding on to them and I'm like, why am I doing that? Why am I holding on to something thinking I'm going to want to come around and stitch it, come back around? And if I do want to, it's not like I can't find something later down the road. So I'm going to do a clean out. Um, I've told many of you this. I'll do it on, probably do it on Instagram because I think that our community is heavily concentrated on Instagram rather than Facebook. I try to reserve Facebook for my, you know, family, um, family updates and things. I have, do have a few stitchy friends on there, but not too many. Um, but my Instagram is really where I think I'm going to do a D stash. So, um, don't panic. You haven't missed anything. I know I've talked about it before. I just haven't got around to, it's like cleaning out your closet, right? You know, it's going to get worse before it gets better. You know this. Um, so starting, starting is daunting and I just haven't had time where I've been still in one spot long enough to get it done. So, um, that's, that's going to happen. So there will be fabric cause I got to let go of a lot of fabric. I purchased a ton of picture this plus um ada when i was an ada stitcher i'm not an ada stitcher anymore there's nothing wrong with it it's just i bought a lot of 14 count and those stitches are just too big for for what i like to do now i like my stitches more petite personally so i need to let some of that go i have a, a whole tote full um that i need to move out so it's just going to be a matter of timing um it seems like the biz, the shop is so busy, which is wonderful. And it's like one really busy, like I went from Eliza Bell Cox right into Sarah Brazier, right into Floss Club, right into Home for the Holidays, back into Floss Clubs shortly. So I just haven't had a day where I can just like, I need to get this done. But when I do, there'll be lots of cool things. So um, follow me on Instagram. You do have to ask to follow me on Instagram. I do try to check that every couple days. Um... All I have to say about that is creeps. There are creeps. There are creeps. There are creeps that pose as non-creepy people. And then there are creeps who are just straight out creepy. So that's all I do. I mean, if you're followed by anyone else in our community that I know, that I know or recognize, then I accept you. It's not, it's not like there's some kind of weird inner circle of uh, Instagram friends. It's just if... If you have no posts, no pictures, and you're not followed or friended or whatever you call it on Instagram by other stitchy people, at least one in our community of thousands, I'm not going to accept your request. I think that's understandable, right? Um, okay. Let's do a shop update. We haven't done one of those in a minute, right? Coffee. I just saw this sitting here. Kef. My weekly lip report, this is Buxom. So Kef loves um, Buxom White Russian as much as I do. Kef, if you don't have this, honey, you need to get it. It is White Russian equivalent, similar. It is called Shimmer Shock Lipstick in color Pyro. But it's, it's creamier and not as, it's not as um, plumping. It does have a little bit of a, a little bit of something that, that happens, but it's, um, just more lipsticky than glossy, but it has a nice shine. So anyway, this is, um, like I said, Shimmer Shock Lipstick in the color Pyro by Buxom. It's just sitting here on the table. 
Okay, here we go. This is shop update. I'll try to go through this fast because I'm already 30 minutes in. All right. I, went, I did a flip through on my last video. If you want a more um, in-depth flip through, check out that video. Home for the Holidays by Blackbird Design was is very hard to find these days. Um, I did my initial order. I got 60 more in when I started this video. I think there was 10 or 12 still available and I have ordered more. So don't panic, but don't wait either. That's all I can tell you with Blackbird. And I also ordered some other books, some old ones. So we'll see what we actually get because that's the problem. Sometimes they they say, oh yeah, you're good. You're getting it. Then they cut it. Um, the, the two charts I will highlight without doing a full on th flip through. Um, this is the Tis the Season. It's a previous release. This is a re-release into this book. Um, the previous release is out of print. I don't think the previous one was called Tis the Season, honestly. I think that I've researched that and I can't remember, but, um, it's beautiful. It's going to be a stitch along. Um, I know Helen, East Coast Crafter, Lynette, Homestaying on the Homefront. I can't remember who else. A zillion people will be stitching this on Labor Day. And you know what? I'm going to chart it up. I mean, I'm going to kit it up. I'm going to put it next to the chair. And if I'm so inclined, I will join along. If not, I will vicariously um, enjoy all of your progress online. So that one, there is so many. I'm not going to do a whole flip through. I just want to highlight the two um, showstoppers, really. And Christmas Garden. This also was previously released. The cost of this when it was released the first time, I think, was almost the same thing as the book, as, as I'm hearing. I don't know that for certain. Um, but it's just absolutely stun it's stunning. Look at that. So there you go. And the great thing is that this, this beautiful stunner of a chart has four colors in it. So if you want to try Fancy Floss or silks or you just want to you know you don't have to make a huge investment of the stuff you're going to waste that that happens a lot I see people people ask me can you fully kit this in silk and I'm like are you sure because half of these only have 10 or 12 stitches and you're going to spend seven dollars on a skein of silk for that okay if you want to I will that's for sure um and it's stitched on R&R &R. It's beautiful. Okay, so just letting you know there's a lot more. Um, I think I said on the last video how many. There's 12 charts in here. 12 charts in the book. It's a collector's book. If you don't have your copy today, please order it. Um, I want to appreciate, I just want to let y'all know, you can. You don't have to order from me. There's a ton of shops, and there's some great ones. There's some great ones that I still buy stuff from on occasion when they have stuff that I can't get for myself um but I still want you to get it from from somewhere what, what's going on prairie schooler santa I probably showed this last week I have more in stock um this was the first thing not this one but I think it was 2016 maybe was the first thing that I um picked back up and stitched and this time last year I was stitching at um when I, when I first joined the EGA, the Embroiderers Guild, we they have an all-day summer stitch-in. And um, it's a, they have a beautiful clubhouse in a gated community. And I went and I stitched. That's what I stitched when I sat there. So I always think about them. I did stitch it on the 18-count Davos fabric, which is what um, they always recommend on these prairie schoolers. Stitch it on whatever you want. You can stitch it on Ada. You can stitch it on linen. 18-count will get you the cute little cute little petite ornament size okay I have these in the shop they are not yet listed so do not panic these are the next three installments in Jeanette Douglas's letters for mom when I say don't panic it's because I took pre-orders and the whole pre-order thing is kind of biting me a little bit um, I'm gonna start invoicing I don't like to invoice until I have something in my hand but at the same time like I have a lot of these in stock but I have people that said they wanted them I send an invoice and then I'm waiting and how fair is that to 
not tell you guys in floss, it, you, you know, y'all that are in floss tube land that want to buy these and would purchase them today, how long do I leave them hanging there for someone else to maybe decide they want? I've invoiced them, I've sent them a remind, so then I make theirs available to somebody else, and then they call me or message me or email me or whatever and say, hey, I was on the list for those. So, moving forward, pre-orders are going to um, go through the website or go through face the Facebook group. That's just how it's going to be. It's easier for me, and that way I don't miss you either. You know, you're paid. You, you've got your receipt. You're good. If I miss you, I'll make it right. Um, anyway, so I'm going to give everyone until Thursday who's been invoiced for these. If you don't pay by Thursday, yours is going to somebody else. So there's September. And these, and I don't know if it's because I ordered them from Jeanette Douglas directly, because I did. They came from Canada. I paid the shipping for you guys. Um, I don't know if everybody is getting these um, floss free silks. I'm sure that's silk. I'm pretty sure. I haven't opened it. I'm not opening because they belong to somebody else, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It doesn't say on the back. The back has all the colors that you need to do the whole entire situation, so I don't know. I haven't opened one. Um, but they're September, forget me not. October with Grateful Hearts, and then you get your... That's stapled inside, so I can't open it. And November, remember me. I love that one. Love it. So, um, third, I'll give everybody until Thursday, not through Thursday, until Thursday when I return from being out of town for a half an afternoon. Anything that's not paid by then for these, they're going to be dibs for everybody else on the site. So. They're a little more expensive than the first one was, but not much. Could be because you get that beautiful floss. All right, back in stock by popular demand. Scarlet Berries by Carriage House. This is stitched in MPIs. Um, only four colors, so we talked about this last time. Uh, you can, this would be beautiful with DMC. You can do anything. but And you can do, if you just happen to have a few um Silks that you haven't finished with something else, you could totally use them and do that in any colorway and it would be gorgeous. Okay. I'm trying to hurry, y'all. I need probably 37 minutes. Why do I worry about the timer on this? I watch floss tube videos that are like two hours long and love every minute of it. B Sampler by Lila Studios. This is awesome. It's chock-a-block full of different motifs. So, if you don't want to do this... I think it is that in a long pillow. I think it's a, I think it's a pillow. If you don't want to do that, you can just pick out the individual motifs. I mean, those would be so cute in cubes or something. And look at that fob. So that's Lila Studios. Love Lila. I think I showed last week. I got in her um, holiday Quaker and Halloween Quaker, and they're gorgeous. So these are um, reprints. So they're paper, not cardstock. Um, old world, old world Santas one, and old world Santas two. And I did not unwrap these because they're sealed. I don't want to be that person that sends you stuff that's new that's already been open. But they're kind of like the I call them like the skinny Santas. I don't. I love some of them. Like I love oh, this guy. He's cool. He's got a walking like a walking stick. This one with a bird. So cool. Um, yeah, I love those. So, Old World Santa's 1 and 2. Re-released just last Friday, Where There Are Bees. This is paper, a paper reprint. This is not cardstock. But brand new. I love these. Again, if you just want to do the middle one, do it. So cute. My Pretties by Plum Street Sampler. I love these. I call them old school Plum Streets. Um, the ones that look like this and not like the new ones, which I'll show you a new one next so we can compare and contrast. Um, this has three charts. I know it's a little late. We were all doing the, the Edgar Allan Poe style before, but I mean, 
I love the Altoids tin that has the candy corn. I love that. It's so cute. Um, take one, my pretty. That's cute. So that was the, that's the old style Plum Street. Here's the new style. So that's what I'm saying. I like the old ones because they're bigger and they're not folded. So finally, and I don't know what's up with this because I'm on pre-order um, automatics with the distributors and I just, they just got around to sending me my um, Plum Street. So the new ones I've got Sheep Heap. They're so cute. They're stacked up. Snort Stack. I'm trying to find Goat Load. Did I not pull one? Oh, here it is. And Goat Load. That one's so cute. I just think of Farm Girl when I see this. And I think of Yvonne, too, because I know she loves her some goats, but those, ugh, so cute. And Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark 3. Look at the whales. I love, 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 love. Love it. And this is also a new release from Plum Street. This is the Cereal Bowl Collection Sampler Lessons 3. And this one says, The daily labors of the bee awake my soul to industry. Ah, I love it. Sorry about the glare. I don't like to open things that I'm selling. And because you have three, you may decide, hey, I need one and two. So I made sure to get some of those too. Uh, lesson one, make use of present time with the bird on it and a red house. Love it. Lesson two is ever faithful, ever kind, firm and generous be thy mind. Let's see what else do I have here to show you. Another last Plum Street new edition. Y'all probably saw Linda Jo did a beautiful version of this and had it framed. Um, Love thy neighbor as thyself. It's grown on me. It's kind of weird because things are in, like, this house is at a weird angle, but I, I, I like it. So, that's another one. Saw Linda Jo doing that one and thought, have to add that to the collection. And another Prairie Schooler reprint is A Prairie Year. This, I love how this is finished. Like, I would want to finish it exactly like this. That is so cute. You could totally do that with, like, a, um, um, what am I trying to say? Like a palette, some palette wood. Love it. So, this is, this is on my list of stuff to do. And, let's see, I thought this one was super cute. Mary Deary. It's called Mary Deary, but it says Mary Noel. The picture doesn't do it justice. If you Google image search this, as I had to, to find a picture to put on the site, um, it's so cute. So this is Homes Homespun Elegance from 2016. Then, probably two of my favorite acquisitions for the shop this week are two older hands-on designs. Um, one from 2014 and one from 2013. So this is 2013's Joy Noel. There, it's an ornament series. I absolutely just think it's so cool. It's very. It seems like Kathy Barrick ish to me. If that's a if being Kathy Barrick ish is a thing that you can be, I like it. So. For those of you who don't have super traditional trees or decor, I thought this would be a cool addition for you. And then this one, stop it, I have to do it, is um, Wreath House. So initially, this the photo on the website is only going to show this portion of the Wreath House. But this reprint has all three included. So, it says, Home for the Holidays. 
So you know I'm not going to stitch this in three separate pieces. I'm going to stitch it all on one piece. This would be so stinking cute on like fabric flare tiny snowflakes, which is probably what I'm going to do. I love it. I love this. I love it. Love. It. I love the trees. Like I was like, well, why don't I have this already? I do now. I love it. Um, so there's Garland House, Reese House. Wreath House and Snowflake House has been updated to now include all three of the holiday homes. I love it. It was stitched on 32 count linen. It was stitched in Gentle Arts. But you could do whatever, right? Love it. And then last but not least, the much awaited release of Barbara Anna's Mystery Halloween Black Cat Hollow. Black Cat Hollow Part 1 is the top part and will be released in three separate charts. If you would like to stitch all three charts, please make sure to follow the pl pattern placement overview that is a part of this chart for correct position on the fabric. So when it's all done in all three parts, it would be 151 by 156. It's stitched 2 over 2, all cross stitch, and I mean, the picture is... Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at this one. So this is um, chart one. So it's going to be long. So it'll be three. Yay! I think I'm most excited about this. I talked about the tag, three designers that you, um, your top three favorite cross-stitch designers. Beth Twist Heartstring Sampleries, hands down, has worked her way into my stitchy life in every way. Beth was one of the first people who um, supported me, who um, did what she could to help me when I was getting started because it is, it's not really easy to open a stitch shop because so many of the distributors and other people in the, in the business end of it want references from other people that you're dealing with. Well, until you start dealing with people, it's different to acquire those references. So Beth was one of my early references and was wonderful. Um, Teresa from, Kit, uh, I say from Kitten Stitcher, Teresa the Kitten Stitcher, from Shake, formerly from Shakespeare's Peddler and Raise the Roof, is um, one of my other favorites. Just because we have a similar taste. We have a similar taste in life. That's the best way to put it. She's my friend. She, um... We share a taste for life. We like the same oddities. We like the same um, samplers. We like the same, um, we have the same very similar sense of humor. And you can see that in a lot of her works, especially in her um, work that she did with Raise the Roof. So Teresa is definitely one of my other favorites. Mm. I would say Hands Across the Sea. However, that's not really fair because those are generally reproductions. So those charts would be, um, you know, for me to say that that's one of my favorite designers, that that would be weird because, you know, those those girls who did those years ago. Um, but I love their I love their design house. I love their production. I love the production of their books. Um, and Blackbird Designs for me right now. That doesn't mean, if I didn't say them on the list, I don't love them. Obviously, I love Barbara Anna. I love Plum Street. But Blackbird Designs um, are timeless. Absolutely timeless. If you fall upon some stitchy stash in a thrift store and there's some Blackbird Designs in it, you could pull that out and stitch it today, and it would just be, uh, it would just be as fitting and wonderful today. So... None of us are ever that lucky to find Blackbird Designs in a thrift store, but I'm just saying, it could happen. So the other, the only other thing I don't have to show you because uh, they sold out in like one day um, were the cotton candy scissors. I still have the cotton candy um, straight scissors. They are a little bit smaller. I think they're three and a quarter inch. I think they're teeny. They are, they're really nice, really sharp, and they have a plastic sheath, so they're great for traveling. Um, the curved scissors I'm sold out of. Fear not, I've already reordered them. So thank you to everybody who jumped on yesterday when I listed them and bought them all up. So um, those will be coming soon. So that's it. 
lots going on. I hope to have some stitchy progress. Well, I'm going to check into the hotel a little bit early tomorrow and I'll be by myself and I can just de decompress and um, watch some mindless TV and do some stitching. And um, we'll have lots more to show you soon. So I love every one of y'all. Have a great, uh, let's see, what day are we in? We're still in the middle of the week. Have a great week and I'll talk to y'all soon.